station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Ready for the event. NESN, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. That's why. Station, do you hear me? How, or station, this is Nesson. How do you hear me? Okay. Howard, station, this is Nesson. How do you hear me? We got you loud and clear. Welcome to the International Space Station, New England Sports Network. Hi. Um, this is so cool. I'm Bella. Nice oh, to meet you. And so cool. Thank you so much for your time and for being here with me. I'm just going to ask you, ask you a few questions today. So, yeah. Um. So you're from Boston. This Bella, so welcome cool. to the International Space Station. Thank you. Um, so you're from Boston, and I know it's been a while since you've been here on Earth, but Nesson's got you with the most recent Boston sports updates. So Jeremy Swayman signed an eight-year contract. Um, Willier Abrey, um, Will Abrey won his first gold. Sorry, <laughs> won his first gold glove and and was the first Red Sox rookie to do so since Fred Lynn in 1975. Jaron Duran had a real breakout year and played his first All-Star game, as well as being nominated for a Silver Slugger Award. And yeah, so we know that you're originally from Mass, and watching games as a Boston sports fan is an experience in itself, and I know it, a lot has changed for you up in space, but I'm wondering, what's the difference, and what have you missed from being from seeing sports at a game in person rather than just like hearing them on the internet? Have you missed anything or is it pretty much the same? Yeah, it, it is definitely different. Um, you know, I have my, you know, Patriot shirt while I'm up here and stuff like that as well. And I have a Red Sox spring training. Hopefully um, I'll be home before that happens, but you never know. Uh, so I, I have my uh, attire up here, which, you know, if you're going to a game in New England, you're going to be all decked out. So trying to keep up with the Joneses this way, but it's just not the same. You don't have the, the excitement of the crowd, you know, and all of that as, as well up here. But, you know, we have a, a great crew. Everybody's into sports. We actually set up a big screen. Uh, the other day so we could watch uh, football on the weekends college football and then uh, and then um, the NFL uh, right outside our crew quarters where we could hang out together so it, it gives a little bit of that uh, f that feeling but it's just it's not it's not the same as feeling the cold air and of fall football and uh, and all the, the the sports networks talking about it and, and being right up to date yeah that's that sounds very different, but like we love a Boston sports fan, even off of Earth. Um, I know you're far away, but how far exactly? How far away are you right now from planet Earth? You know, we're actually not that far, and it, it's a it just talks to the in, the atmosphere, right? We're only about 250 miles orbiting the planet, so it's just between Boston and New York, right? So it's not really that far. Um, but that's all the atmosphere we have on this big, huge planet, so we have to uh, take care of it. But um, right now, just because you asked, we're somewhere between South America and Africa, making our way up through the middle of Africa. Should be a really cool pass to look out the window. Um, so we get a view of the planet all, all over the planet while we're just that 250 miles above the Earth. Nice. And how fast are you moving right now? So we're traveling around 17,500 miles an hour. It takes about an hour and a half to go around the planet. So uh, so we get, a, like I said, a lot of views. The, the Earth orbit, I mean, rotates underneath us, and so we, the, we see different parts of the planet as we're going around, obviously. Now, speaking of speed, I know that you've run the Boston Marathon while being in space and most recently ran the Falmouth Road Race. Can you tell me how that was, and did you hit the time that you wanted? 
Yeah, the Boston Marathon was a couple of years ago. I was a lot younger. I was a little bit uh, better runner at that point in time. So, and maybe maybe a little stupider too, because I can't really believe that I signed up to do that. Um, but once I got on the treadmill, I thought to myself, I better finish. I, I conned my sister into running the real one on Earth, and it was a cold and rainy day. So I just sort of trudged along, sort of hoping the treadmill would break so then I could get off it. But uh, <laughs> no, it didn't, and I kept going. So. Yeah, that was that was all right. You wear a harness, and so you're strapped down to the treadmill, and so it, it actually is supposed to put some pressure on your hips for your bone density and your hips and your legs and your feet. Uh, so it was doing that, and it sort of puts a little bit of pressure on your shoulders. It's like wearing a you know a backpack. So I was alternating between the two. Uh, I ran it a little bit slower than I was running at that point in time. So, I, but I was I was very pleased with the time, four hours and twenty something minutes. Um, so I'm now I'm a little older, a little smarter. I signed up for Falmouth, which is a 7.1, 7.2. It's really not a specific distance. It was just a from one place to the next place. That's how it started. So uh, it's a, it's a great run. It though has some hills. Um, we don't have hills here, which is great. But you still have the harness. Uh, that one I did just about like how I liked it, about one hour for that run, and uh, it was great to actually hear the crowd at the start, so I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Yeah, running a marathon in and of itself is just, wow, a huge accomplishment, not to mention in space. So what led you to run this marathon? Was it something you wanted to do before you went into space or something you thought would be fun once you were up there? So um, I qualified. That's sort of why I wanted to run it in the first place. I had run Houston the year before, and I was like, wow, I have a qualifying time for Boston, and I'm not going to get to use it because, darn, I'm going to space. But, um, you know, all joking aside, I was like, wow, that was a pretty good accomplishment of my life. So I was thinking to myself, how, am I, how could I run it? And, um, and also at the same time, my brother, my sister, and myself grew up as swimmers, and it's just been a way of life for us. Like you get up in the morning, you go out, and you go swim or you go run or you do something in the morning before you get up and take a shower. And I, I just think that that's a good way to go about life. I, I know that I'm an astronaut, one, because I was healthy and part of the astronaut interview process is making sure you're healthy and your body can take this trip to space and be up here and then that return to Earth. And I was thinking about it and just wanted to sort of reiterate that to kids that this is a, a good way to you know live your life, making sure athletics and sports are always a part of it. So I wanted to just highlight that as well as run my qualifying time because it's a big honor to run the Boston Marathon. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And have you lost any weight while training for the for the Falmouth Road Race? Does being up in space affect how your overall health has been or changed while being in space? Oh, there's a lot of changes that go on up here, but I'm, uh, you know, it's funny. I think there's some rumors around out, outside there that I losing weight and stuff no i'm actually right at the same amount we go weigh ourselves we have a, a spring mass dampener that weighs ourselves and i'm the same weight that i was when i got up here i think things shift around quite a bit you know there's you probably heard of a fluid shift where um folks in space you know their heads look a little bit bigger because the fluid evens out along the body um, but now you know butch and i have been up here for a number of months we've been on the workout gear we've got a bike we got a treadmill and we got weightlifting equipment and i could definitely tell that uh weightlifting which is not something i do all the time has definitely changed me my thighs are a little bit bigger my butt is a little bit bigger uh, we do a lot of squats and just to go back to um you know the treadmill why it's because we're working on our bone density and our in our hips and in our feet so um i think my body has changed a little bit but uh i i weigh the same Nice. And keeping our bodies healthy here on Earth and space is so important. And part of that is nutrition and food. Now, I know that maybe is there is there um, any differences between the food you eat in space versus on Earth or any rules that you can bring up there? You know, it's interesting you, you bring that up. I was just talking to uh, my mom and her friends, and I was showing them the galley, which is behind us, and showing them some of the food. Some of my favorites that we have up here, this one uh, dish, Turkish fish stew, which is really good. It has good fish in it, and it's olives and other things like that, and, uh, and, and rice to go along with it. And they were all looking at me. They are like, that doesn't look so good. <laughs> it comes in a packet, you know, that's already pre-made, and so all we really have to do is heat it up. We don't have to really cook. 
Um, or stuff is rehydrated and we just hydrate it and then heat it up. That's what I did for the rice. So it has a little bit of a funny look to it. Um, most of the foods are sort of moist because you don't want stuff to be like flaky and, and go all over in the air, you know, in your hair, in your sleeping bag and all that kind of stuff. So um, it has a little bit of a moist look to it. So maybe it doesn't look as wonderful as, uh, you know, going to a restaurant, but it's really tasty. Our food lab does a great job um, giving us not only food that tastes good, but is also really nutrition, nutritionally balanced. And over uh, a course of about you know a week, we change out, we get the um, another menu. And more recently, we have uh, a spacecraft that just came up here, and it brought all sorts of treats for us. I like uh, those bullseye candies, and uh, my family sent me up a bunch of those, so that was pretty nice. I love those candies too. Those are my favorites. Um, is there any activities you're currently working on, any that relate to STEM, spacewalk, station fixes, anything like that? Oh, gosh. we With the spacecraft that came up, not only did it deliver candy and other good stuff like that, but it also tons of experiments. Um, since it came here, we've been working on all sorts of things. I was in the glove box the other day doing some stem cell research. Um, they're doing... A, Right. This whole morning, uh, we're doing some other um, research inside the glove box. So it's one experiment after another. Uh, there's ones with uh, plant growth, which is really quite interesting if we're going to go somewhere else besides for the International Space Station. Um, there, it's, it's packed. Every single moment, it seems like somebody's flying around doing some type of task. Yeah. So uh, that was Nick who just flew by here. Yeah. But, and, you know, we live here. We're our own... Um, um, IT guys were our own maintenance guys, so I was working on a piece of equipment earlier today because if something breaks, we've got to fix it. So every day there's all sorts of actions. It's never never seemingly repetitive. It's always fun, never boring. Um, we might you, you mentioned spacewalks. We are uh, looking at possibly doing some spacewalks in January, so we'll we'll start to prepare for those after this spacecraft with all this experiments and goods um, leaves. So sometime in December we'll prepare, and then hopefully we'll do some in January. Yeah, wow, that is just so cool. Hard to comprehend, actually. Um, but my last question for you is, I'm a girl who's very interested in STEM and maybe having a future with it one day. I love learning about it at school. And I know that STEM is a field that's prominently dominated by men. Is there any advice you have for girls wanting to go into that field, wanting to become an astronaut, anything like that, or any challenges you faced when you first, when you first started? Ooh, that's a big question. But, you know, the first advice I would give people are why not? I think, you know, women are as curious as men, and that's what, you know, STEM and science and technology, engineering, math is all about, just trying to understand, trying to want to know more about what's going on and how things work, how things operate. We were just having a conversation about Janus particles. I, I really don't know anything about it, but Don Pettit, who's here, is working on this experiment, and it's so interesting to just learn and know what else is what else is out there. I mean, when I was a youngster, when I was in elementary school, I thought everything was had already been discovered, and obviously it hasn't been, you know. And so there's so much more to discover, so much more to explore, and why not be part of it, right? Um, so. You mentioned like some difficulties. Well, yeah, you're going to have a group where maybe you're going to be the only one who's a woman, right? Maybe you're going to be, you know, the only one that, uh, you know, I don't know, uh, from, you know, Nebraska or California or whatever. Who, it doesn't really matter, right? Everybody, humans are humans and everybody's curious. So just jump in there and, and ask the questions. Don't be afraid to fail and, uh, and try out a whole bunch of new things and you'll learn stuff. Thank you so much for that piece of advice. And thank you so much for your time today and for talking to me um, and for being on Ness and Clubhouse. This has been so awesome. And I hope to see you here on Earth soon. Ah, oh, a flying football. All right, when I get back, ah, oh, we'll, football. when I get back, we'll definitely be going to some games for sure. Yeah. Go New England Sports oh. Network. Woohoo! Yeah. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you.